Welcome to this week's episode of The Better Half. I'm Kendra D. St. Alban, The Better Half of the Afternoon Show with Bernsey and Gambo. And this is Katie Hartley, of course, The Better Half of the Morning Show with Doug and Wolf. We're going to take a look back at some of the things that have been going on this week. That's right, Kendra. We're going to start with our very own NFC West Power Poll. And then we'll talk about a chubby QB. And then we'll show a video of the funniest example of fan interference I have ever seen. So stay with us on The Better Half. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Better Half. It's time to get into the ESPN.com's Power Poll, their preseason Power Poll that they always put out. And um, let's take a quick look at that Power Poll. We can. First in the NFC West, just breaking it down for the NFC West, first there's the Rams, then there's the Seahawks, then there's the Cardinals, and then the 49ers come in at number four in the NFC West. Surprised, not surprised, do you think it's accurate? I think right now that it's pretty accurate. I think the Cardinals have a chance to move up and get ahead of the Seahawks. I don't think the Seahawks are going to be great. A lot of unknowns there with the quarterback situation. But same with the Cardinals, you know, mm -hmm. with Kevin Cobb. And you have Larry Fitzgerald, but then who do you have after that? Everyone keeps talking about Andre Roberts being the number two receiver and Coach was not trying not to focus on the number two receiver, I think, because they don't have a really solid number two. So a lot of unknowns. They signed over 50 free agents in the first week. I think they're accurate right now, but I think the Cardinals may move up above the Seahawks. I think the Seahawks are not going to be that great. Okay, so ESPN.com has the St. Louis Rams at number one in the Which NFC West. Which is good. West. Accurate, I and think. And you agree with that. Yeah. I do not. I think it should be Seattle. They did win the division last year. Um, so they, I mean, they did make it to the postseason, even though they were 7-9. That's all right. Um, I like uh, the Tavares Jackson signing. Um, yes, I've, we know. I've always been a fan of his. Yes, I actually think he, he will be a good starting quarterback in the NFL. We'll, we'll see. I probably won't draft him in my fancy football league. But well, what the heck? Isn't I that the first think, sign right there? But you said that there's a lot of oh. unknowns there. Tavares Jackson and but Kevin But you think Cobb. they're better than the Cardinals. Both, I do think they're better than the Cardinals. They were better than the Cardinals last year. And I haven't quite seen enough yet with the Cardinals. I mean, these, Seattle also signed Sidney Rice and Zach Miller at tight end. I mean, they're really starting to pick up their offense. Wait a minute here. Did you just talk about Zach Miller at tight end? What about Todd Heap? What about your love affection for Todd Heap last week? Well, I... Now I all mean, of a sudden you're going with the Seahawks <laughs> tight end. I still, think, I still think Seattle should be number one. I don't know. I think your judgment's being clouded by a lover. Jackson. Well, we'll get, into that. <laughs> we'll get into that later. Okay, so number two, um, ESPN.com has the Seattle Seahawks at number two. Who are you putting at number two in your power poll? Well, I think right now the Rams followed by the Seahawks and the Cardinals almost kind of tied. I think okay. the 49ers for sure in mm -hmm. last place, but the Cardinals could be swapped. Who knows, though? I think, you know, the, the preseason could actually be really telling this year. Usually you don't put a lot of stock into the games. Mm -hmm. I think it can make a big difference. And now we both agree on number four yeah. in the NFC West is the Niners. Yeah, awful. Are we, we're two thumbs down yeah. on the Niners. No, but I heard they're like doing all out tackling at practice, which is kind of interesting. We'll see. Yeah, how that I'm goes not over. Very I'm sure that went over really well with the players. Yeah, I think that um, the over under is probably like four games that yeah. they'll win. Yeah, maybe. And then they've got Alex Smith, of course, at quarterback now. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll see. Well, about and that. speaking of quarterbacks, kind of an oh, issue yeah. maybe with the Redskins. I, I don't know. I mean, they have a quarterback, mm -hmm. but he looks a little chubby, <laughs> to say the least. I mean, granted, you know what? They maybe took, like, the most unflattering picture of Rex Grossman right there because right. we did see some other shots, and he didn't look quite so fat. But mm -hmm. I don't know if that guy has a, a muscle on his body right now. Well, and they, they did release the depth chart for the Washington Redskins this week, and Rex Grossman is number one. He's listed as the number one quarterback on the depth chart right now. Now, last year, he was listed at 6'1", 225. You think that guy weighs 225 pounds? No, 250 in all fat. That's my <laughs> guess. And Tim Hightower, we're going to be getting a lot of carries if Rex looks like that. Yeah, at least 240. So I'm going to guess that he probably did a whole lot of nothing during the lockout. A lot of Twinkies, I think. That's yeah. what that looks like. I didn't even see any anybody except for Deuce Latouille that looked that heavy. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see um, how how the NFL lockout, how all that lack of practice shakes out uh, in preseason this week. Now let's move on to one of the the funniest video I think I saw actually on YouTube in the last couple of days. This is from the Jacksonville Sharks and the Georgia Force um, of the Arena Football League. So this guy goes to return a punt. It's kind of tough to see in, in real time, but when you see in the replay, it's probably the most egregious fan interference 
Except it's not going to get quite as much attention as others because it's the Arena right, Football League. Right, because it is Arena Football. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anybody really get tackled like we see here in this play. I mean, literally, watch yeah, the guy in the gray shirt. Yeah, there's a face mask right there. If I had a flag, I would throw That's it. That's a face mask and a hold and everything all now, in one. No, I can't believe that that guy didn't turn around and shove that fan right back. I mean, that's what I would have done. But doesn't it almost seem like with arena football, I mean, the fans are so close. It's so ridiculous well, it's as it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm actually shocked that we haven't seen something that bad before. And, and I love arena football in the sense that I think it is a great entertainment value for fans. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we have the Rattlers here. I think fans love it. It's fast-paced. You get close. But at the same time, I cannot stand fan interference. Not just with this, but in baseball or anything else. If somebody's trying to make a play, mm -hmm. get out of the way. I just It drives me crazy. But, I mean, then move the fans back. I, I agree. You know, put I something agree. in the way. If it's going to interfere with the game that much, especially like that, I was very impressed with That's that. That's the problem. Everybody wants to get closer and closer. I mean, look at the NBA. You stick right. your foot out. You could trip a guy coming up the sideline. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think the fans are maybe a little too close, even for security purposes mm -hmm. now. <laughs> Anyways, well, that'll do it for us this week. We hope to catch you next week. And don't forget, you can always follow us on Twitter. I am at Kinder620, mm -hmm. and this is at FunKatie620. We'll see you next week on next week's episode of The Better Half.